Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Feed My Sheep Earthquake Reports and more. I'm Terry Rempel and it's the 4th of June. It's been a while since I've been on and we have a big program to today. Uh, a lot has been happening but much more is happening today. We've got a widespread reactivation of the whole western side of North America at least uh, as far south as uh, Southern California. So we're going to get into that shortly. Uh, before we begin, we always dedicate our programs to our Heavenly Father service. So we'll begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for continuing to provide protection um, to us and to this program. We thank you, Jesus, for your leadership in all matters. And um, certainly this there is so much going on around the world we thank you for this information on top of all the other many streams of information that we pay attention to and see going on in the world. There is just so much going on as we come into end times. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your understanding of so many things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And so we're uh, looking at a little bit of back data. I just had a couple of images I wanted to show you here. This is... Uh, uh, Mount Shasta, and this is, it says from a couple of days ago, but it's actually uh, from about a month, month and a half ago. A nice little steam cap off the top of it there, and I thought you'd find that interesting. So I'm showing you that today. And uh, this is Mount Lassen from the 31st, and showing you some of the bigger activity that we've been having. This is Warrenkovsky Volcano, the Wrangell site, back on the 31st as well. And we can see a small earthquake there and uh, lots of infill activity. So now we're going to get into the current data. This is Mount Spur. We're starting right up in Alaska. Uh, this is the closest site to um, Anchorage, uh, closest volcano to Anchorage. And we can see small earthquakes that we don't normally see here. And they're red marked for the uh, seismologist's attention. So these are automatically red marked by the computer. Um, so we've got a small a swarm of small earthquakes going on at Mount Spur. Now the question is, we're looking at widespread ac activity. We're now down at Edgecombe. We're seeing infill beginning down here and a small earthquake uh, cluster up here. Why are we seeing activity the whole length of northern Vancouver, or I mean of uh, North America? And I think it relates to solar. I can't prove it, but uh, I've not seen everything tied together active all at the same time, uh, all the way from Spur down to uh, California. So that's what's unusual today. Um, some of these sites are more active than, quite a bit more active than normal, but uh, they're not at their their high peak performance, but we're going to show you some of the peaks as well. This is Wrangell, the Wrangell site on Warrenkovsky Island uh, volcano, and this is today, and we can see a small earthquake here. Um, this one's probably more distant, but there's uh, there's clustering or a swarming small earthquakes at Warrenkovsky Island uh, most days now. That's uh, That's got fresh lava flows on it from uh, 2012 imagery on uh, Google Earth, so it's an active volcano. Uh, this is, there was an earthquake in Squamish yesterday, uh, they called it a 2.5. Here we're looking from Port Alberni on Vancouver Island, central Vancouver Island, and it shows up quite well. And this shows up quite a bit south as well. Um, Port Alberni is getting busier. I'm surprised by that. But uh, there we are. Vancouver Island is all volcanic, so I'm not entirely shocked or anything. It's just uh, I haven't seen uh, Port Alberni getting busier. Bellingham. Why are we at Bellingham? Because it's uh, a site directly west of Mount Baker. And look at the increase in activity that we're seeing at Bellingham. So that's um, significant activity. Lots of tremors, lots of ground shifting. Um, so we're looking now at shucks on the backside of Mount Baker. That's This is on the ENE channel, 
we're going to, and so you can see the activity increase is significant there. This is using a Shuxon with a different channel, and it shows the same thing, but in a different way. So we go from having fairly flat lines, this is normal activity here, and we get into bigger activity through the bottom uh, available data of this seismogram. Now this is Mount Baker at about 2% of true and anything gets through on, on this, this seismogram has turned way down, like I say, about 2% of true. So all these little strikes, if you're on a phone it's going to be hard to see these, but uh, all these little strikes are uh, major bursts of activity to even get through on the seismogram because it's set so low. Now to the south at Darrington, heading towards Glacier Peak. And there we are with the ongoing activity there. A little, little bit of a ju uh, jump in activity. Rockport, Washington. So now we're quite a bit south of Squamish. This is supposed to be a 2.5 in Squamish. This looks, uh, by the propagation, looks to be at least a 3. So that's, uh, that's more significant. South, southeast of Glacier Peak, and here we are with uh, more activity. This isn't over-the-top activity, but it's just it's showing that there's widespread activity. An increase all over. This is southeast of Glacier Peak at Sugarloaf Peak. And we can see there was a significant increase for a time here as well. That's this morning. Today's. Today's. This is Rattlesnake Lake, east of Kent, southeast of Seattle, uh, north. Uh, northwest of Mount Rainier or just about due north of it, Mount Rainier actually. So this is a lot of activity at Rattlesnake Lake. This is uh, in the uh, on the western side of the Cascades. It's certainly in the volcanic area. This is going to the other side of the Cascades. We're at Lookout, Lookout Mountain, still in the Cascades range, and looking at the activity there. This is northeast, uh, sorry, north, yeah, northwest of Ellensburg. Long period pulsed magma signals in there, so we've got a magma channel in this area as well. This is Mount Rainier, the northeast peak, and this is a whole bunch of uplift at camp, from the Camp Sherman site. So that's uh, about two hours of uplift fracturing. That's very significant. There's another uh, five, ten minutes here and more of it down here. So there's a lot of activity at Mount Rainier right now. This is a significant jump in activity. We don't normally see this. Um, I haven't seen a, seen a jump like this since they turned all their seismograms down. So it's overcome their um, turn down and now it's showing up quite strongly again. Um, this is Mount Rainier. We like to have a couple of sites. If we're saying one area is busy, have a couple of sites if we can to, to prove it, to verify it. So this is uh, Mount Rainier, the southwest base at Gobbler's Knob. And you can see the normal on this channel, the normal fairly low level activity. Mount Rainier is an active volcano and here's the increase in activity and you can see with the uh, sharpness and thickness of the lines that there's uh, um, the sharp strikes that are mixed in. There's very small uh, earthquakes mixed into this as well or tremors, large tremors um, and a lot of ground movement. This is the southeast peak of Mount Rainier. And we can see that there's small earthquakes through this as well. And lots of tremors, just loaded with tremors. That's not over the top busy, but uh, it's when you tie it into this, then it's significant. It's verifying the activity. Early this morning at Sugar Bowl, Mount St. Helens. So this is up near the peak. The rebuilding dome at Mount St. Helens. So very active today. This is uh, Sugar Bowl currently. That was an earlier view. This is later. This was just maybe uh, 20 minutes, half an hour ago. And uh, you can see it continues to be busy. Johnson Ridge Observatory north of uh, Mount St. Helens. So you can see it's busy up there as well. So it's busy all around Mount St. Helens. It's not just busy um, at the dome. This is the East Dome site. 
Mount St. Helens, so also very busy at this site. It's an actively rebuilding volcano, and it goes through times when it's uh, much busier. But this time it's much busier all the way now from, uh, from north of Anchorage at Mount Spur all the way down to Mount St. Helens um, east and now Mount St. Helens west. And we'll show you that this continues south. So this is St. Helens west, the west side. Very active. And this is west of Mount St. Helens. This is about 10 miles away, 15 miles away, something like that, um, at the flat site, flathead site. And uh, very, very active in this location as well. So it spreads out a long ways. This is a long ways to the west. This is Mount Adams on the east side. It's uh, connected by a magma channel to Mount St. Helens. That's, uh, that's been proven for uh, decades now or at least over a decade. This is Augsburger, Mount Augsburger, just north of the Columbia River. Now, it doesn't look that dramatically busy, but we have steam burst signal sites from here. So we not only have the tremors, there's only one site at this volcano, and it is a volcano. Um, we've got steam signals coming from this. So this is magma-related infill tremors. That's what we're having there. This is just north of the Columbia River, in Washington, just right beside the river. Let's get that downsized again. And looking to the east, Eureka on the Snake River, just east of the Columbia. So if it's busy right next on a volcano right next to the river, it, pays, it makes sense to take a look at the river itself. There's a known magma channel there. And uh, so we're onto the Snake, which is an extension of uh, a split in the magma channel heads up. Uh, up the Snake River from the Columbia River. All the Columbia River basalts were put down because of fault-related activity. And uh, so faults become magma channels. Rivers run in faults because they present the low point to run in in many cases. And you get plutons deposited along rivers. You can find those in geologic formations. So this is common standard practice to have faults in rivers. And it's very, very common. And here we are... Um, looking at the uh, Eureka site, and we're seeing some BLF movement waves along with tremors, lots of tremors. Why do you get VLF movement waves? Well, there's a fault shifting there along the Snake River. That's the primary um, probable cause of these uh, fault waves, or VLF waves, rather. And this is today, same site, having more shifting what I believe is more shifting of that fault. So along the Snake River, this is not far from the Columbia River. And just a little bit uh, south and to the west is Yellow Pit. This is Yellow Pit yesterday. Yellow Pit uh, normally has these long period magma, pulsed magma signals, but it's also got a whole bunch of infill that developed there. So it got really a lot more active yesterday and that continues today we can see the ongoing pulsed magma signals through here but a lot of um, magma movement through this area today when we look to patterson patterson is believe it or not it's normally about this busy so this is not a significant change it's just very active with these pulsed magma signals now this is artifact i believe in here it's not there on this line, it just starts there. So every time it gets a big signal, it amplifies the area of the signal and the signal itself. So these signals are a little bit smaller than what they present, but it's significantly busy. You have to do some interpretation with uh, many PNSN seismograms. There's a lot of, a lot of flaws in what's going on. Here over the Cascade Locks, we get a little better representation, downsizes these signals. It's on the Columbia River Fault. Again, we're getting these pulse magna signals. I don't believe this is uh, that uh, Patterson is any busier than this site. And this site actually has some amplification lines as well. Um, so is uh, the Columbia River is just showing a lot of activity. That's, that's the point of this. And this extends over to Kelso, Washington, showing the same type of pulsed magma activity heading in that direction or continuing to the uh, west. Um, we see it um, 
as tremors, ongoing tremors from Alston uh, in Oregon, and then at Astoria. This is the activity today, and there's a clear increase this morning. I doubled up on size grams there, so I'm skipping one. This is Yoakum Ridge, Mount St. Hood on the west, west side. So significant activity there. So it's very active. It's not that's not the most active it's ever been, but it's it's active. And this is south of Sisters at Trout Creek Butte. Um, Sisters itself is also very busy, but it's so full of artifact right now that uh, I didn't want to try and split the difference of showing you what's real activity and what's artifact. There's just a mess of uh, signals going on in on that site. So this is south of Sisters and showing an activity increase. That end. Activity increases uh, southeast, um, or sorry, that southwest, going southwest to Finn Rock. And that's a lot of activity increasing. This is normal down here for Finn Rock. This is the increase up here. So it's improving, but all busy at the same time. New Northeast Newberry Craters, the CIHL site. Um, also very busy in that same period. That's a lot of activity for New Newberry. It's not an all-time high, but it's very busy. This is Tom Butte, southeast uh, Newberry. I've never seen it this busy. So this is a new high for this location. So that's a lot of activity here up at the top. That's a major up infill uh, and some fracturing associated with it. And this is North Crater Lake, and that's a lot of activity for North Crater Lake. And we're going to see another picture of Crater Lake earlier, showing you uh, some of the precursor activity to this back on the 31st. Um, now, continuing south, we're west of Mount Hebron, north of Mount Shasta. That's not going to help. Um, so we can see that there's there's the baseline. So this it's got... It drops right back down to the baseline. This is not an over amplitude site. This is just a lot of activity. So the volcanic activity extends north between uh, north of Mount Shasta, south of Crater Lake. It's filling in the gaps. And this is north Mount Shasta. This is, well, I gotta quit doing that. Uh, this is about as busy as it gets. And you can see this is not an over amplitude seismogram by any means. It drops off to a completely flat baseline at times. Um, so this is actually a little under amplitude. There should always be some activity showing on the baseline if the seismogram is set correctly, but there's periods of absolute flat line here. So, uh, and no elevation of the baseline thickness or increase. So this is a little undervalue. Mount, uh, Mount Shasta is quite active. And I showed you the steam cap um, image earlier. And uh, that's, that's a good image to refer back to. Mount Lassen. Um, now, it's not as busy as it has been, but it's got a lot more activity. It's got a higher volume of activity. Overall, it's not showing the large signals. What it means is, um, from my understanding, is uh, the blockages, the things that have choked off the steam release, have, um, have been cleared out of the way, and now it's breathing more easily. And so it's, there's lots of volume, and there's steam signals mixed into this. Um, you can't have this amount of activity and have no steam. And this is pretty much daily activity. The last three days have been like this. Uh, so there's going to be steam release from Mount Lassen. Uh, but the uh, nature of the volcanic activity has changed at Mount Lassen because the volume is there. It's greater, greater volume, smaller tremor signals. It's just the steam's escaping more easily. So it's not giving you the burst signals to the large volume, and it's not giving you the large uplift fracture signals. Now, if we get a major increase in steam offs, this can revert back to higher volume and larger signals, and that's the next step in activity increase that we expect at Mount Lass. And as it continues to head towards an eruption, or it seems to be heading that way as a progression. This is Lake Almonor to the south. Now, we talked about about a year ago, uh, last summer, um, having 
a 5 and a 5.5 from Lake Almanor. Now, it was reported smaller than that, but it showed on the seismograms as larger and it propagated further. And we continue to have clusters of earthquakes at Lake Almanor, and that's volcanic in nature. And this is a volcanic uh, margin of the south end of the Cascades, and then it transitions into the, into the Sierra Nevadas, right south of uh, Lake Almanor. So this being clustered with earthquakes, daily earthquakes pretty much, um, on it tells us we've got ongoing volcanic activity at Lake Almanor south of um, Mount Lassen, south and a little bit to the east. This is Verde Peak north of, north of uh, Lake Tahoe. Um, again, it's very active. It continues to be active, and I'm just showing the, you the continued activity today. This is north of Soda Springs, and the reason we're showing you this is because we're in the Sierra Nevadas, um, north of Soda Springs. So north of Lake Tahoe, uh, actually it's to the northwest, um, north of Soda Springs, and that's an active area. It's also active to the uh, east or to the, sorry, to the west of uh, Lake Tahoe at the Bunker Hill site. This was earlier this morning. Here we see it's quite busy. And then uh, just before, before I came on, I went back and I captured this. And it shows it's, uh, again, much busier. So this is in the Sierra Nevadas, volcanic activity. Um, that's what's causing these tremors. And this is west of Tragedy Spring to the south. Again, lots of tremors there, and it's been very, very busy. And uh, just to show you a couple of other sites, I went back to the 17th, uh, Sierraville on the 17th. Uh, that's north of um, Soda Springs, quite a bit further, um, north, northwest of Verde Peak. In the Sierra Nevadas, lots of activity from time to time at Sierraville. So this is back on the 17th. This is Sierraville on the 15th. And now I'm going to show you just uh, a few snapshots of activity elsewhere in California. Um, this is unreported uh, earthquake activity south of Covello on the 17th. That's very large activity. So for that to be unreported is significant. This is uh, Fort Bragg on the 17th. So lots of activity along the shoreline. And Point Arena on the 17th as well. So lots of activity, widespread activity along the shoreline at times as well. Sutter Buttes on the 28th. So this fires up from time to time. It's not currently busy. This crater lake on the 31st. And so I was telling you there would be precursor activity. What are we seeing here? We're seeing um, some significant waves of uplifting magma coming in. So we're getting some significant ground disturbance relative to magma infill. And that was a precursor to the increase. Uh, Palmer Lift was very busy on the 31st as well. So this is a very significant period of uplift fracturing at Mount Hood back on the 31st. Now this is back to today. Double Spring, Nevada. This is southeast uh, of Lake Tahoe. I think we're about 80 miles away, 60, 80 miles, something like that. This is an area that's not far from where uh, we found uh, fresh magma on a mountain and gave you images uh, about a year ago, program about a year ago. So there's fresh magma in the area, and this is magma-related activity from our assessment. Now, showing clusters of earthquakes. Why? Because clusters of earthquakes um, typically relates to either fault movement when you have a, a related line of activity or, uh, and we see that um, down to the south near in the Kozo volcanic field, um, there's lines of activity in that area outlying a fault, but, oh, outlining a fault. But this, we've got a cluster of earthquakes at Mount, um, at Mammoth Mountain rather, and then south of Long Valley Caldera, we've got a large cluster as well. So this can, areas, I've got four weeks of data up here, so that's four weeks of earthquakes. Um, it's not firing off steady, but there's lots of earthquakes coming in Long Valley Caldera and south. There's a lot of activity from uh, Hilltop Hot Springs um, every day. 
And this is south to Lake Isabella. And I'm showing that there's activity, significant activity in the Sierra Nevadas. Now, this isn't as busy as south of Mammoth, obviously, or the Long Valley, south of the Long Valley Caldera. But there's widespread earthquakes south of Lake Isabella. And I believe these are volcanic as well. This whole area is old volcanics. And we're showing um, as part of this and seeing as part of this that uh, there's major shoreline activity um, that tells us there's subduction underneath the Sierra Nevadas coming from the shoreline and underneath the Sierra Nevadas that's feeding all of this activity at Double Spring into Nevada, um, Mammoth and uh, Lake Tahoe area, east of Lake Tahoe and north to Sierraville, all of that area is uh, preceded by shoreline tremors and if that's feeding new magma in underneath there's a good reason why you're going to see more on top um, at the surface and part of this what we're looking at today we understand um, to be related to a significant increase that's been going on for over a month a uh, couple three months now um, solar activity and there's quite a drive of solar activity going on we've been tracking wages world and he does a great job of uh, providing information on solar flare cmes uh, coronal holes and other um, ejectate uh, energy coming at the earth and it certainly has an effect when we see steam at mount shasta we see major tremors at mount lassen but then we see also that we're having activity um, at high levels all the way um, from Mount Spur, we're showing you to the south of Sierra Nevadas. So that's very significant. Now we could also include uh, some of the major earthquake swarms that we've had in the Gulf of California. And uh, we had another one that was uh, in Mexico, north of the Gulf of California, that was, uh, that was related to geothermal. There's a big geothermal production there. Um, so we had a good look at that one when that cluster was going on south of Salton Sea and uh, central, uh, about, about centered between the Gulf of California and the Salton Sea in Mexico. But there was another tremor uh, or earthquake swarm that was down there as well that was unrelated a little bit more to the, more to the west. So there's uh, ongoing activity through the Gulf of California up into the Salton Sea and uh, we're waiting to see what happens. It's going to take a major episode to ever open that up because um, Salton Sea is uh, 200 plus feet below sea level. Uh, so if that opens up and it doesn't take a lot of land height uh, change south or much of a gap to have the ocean run rushing back into the Salton Sea area, um, it's been there before. There's seashells to prove it, and uh, we expect it's going to be there again once uh, once things change, once things start changing in a bigger way. So there's lots going on in the world right now, and we don't want to um, we want to bring you the important information. Um, information that lets you know what's going on rather than uh, telling you day by day that there's a little change here and a little change there. Uh, this is probably more of an impactful video um, in that it's been uh, two months basically since we did a video uh, and you can see a change from the last program. If you go back to see the last, uh, the last earthquake related program, you're going to see a, a significant change to this one. And that's what we're trying to bring to you. We're mainly focused on the uh, Cascade Range. But there's, uh, there's a lot of activity. And we, uh, we also look at some of the more distant activity. I'm not sure if it's on here or not. Let's see. what did I do? Where did I stop here? Quick look. No, that was it. Um, over into the, the uh, Centennial Mountains, um, there's been significant activity um, in Idaho um, and Montana, um, Wyoming, of course, includes um, uh, Yellowstone, uh, but Yellowstone on the perimeter has been very active through the uh, the Salmon Mountains, Salmon River Mountains, I believe they're called. But anyway, um, major activity in uh, in Idaho, but periodically. 
So right now the, the focus is on the Cascades and, and the extensions north and south, and that's what we're bringing, um, bringing to you today. So I'm not going to tie you up too much longer. You all have important things to do. We hope you've enjoyed the information we provided. And if you like this, leave us a comment. Uh, it's, it's good to be able to respond to those. If you have any questions, let us know and we'll get back to you. We uh, respond to just about all of our comment, commenters so, and uh, most days. And we'll, we'll be glad to be in touch with you and uh, let you know what's going on. Um, till then... Go with God, be blessed. Um, coming into end times, there's lots of things to be prepared for, food issues, uh, political issues, uh, lots going on. So uh, we pray the best for all of you and uh, go with God and we'll see you next time on Feed My Sheep, Earthquake Reports and more. Bye for now.